So Ken, uh, could you let us know why people should no longer worry too much about OPs? Well, I think uh, really there, Mark, they've lost their, re their relevance. Originally when I was on the board that helped set this up, we had quite different conditions today. Most students actually were in year 12 and were completing the overall position ranking, if you like. And today, actually only about 40% of the students are in that statewide rank. And there's a bunch of reasons why that's occurred. We've expanded the curriculum. We have a lot more vocational education and training. We, for example, have a lot more authority subjects that can contribute to the overall position. And it's very difficult. For example, today we have about 57 authority subjects that can contribute to an OP, but the comparison between those subjects of student results isn't that easy. That's why we use something like, the, well, we actually use the Queensland Core Skills Test to scale those results. That test in itself has uh, been, if you like, uh, overemphasized in schools, as Gabrielle Matters, who is the original architect of it, said, and she did the review for this Queensland Government, the report that came out last year from the Australian Council of Education Research with uh, Professor Jeff Masters, who's the CEO of uh, the Australian Council for Educational Research. And she made it very clear that there's over-preparation for the test, that it's got a status way beyond where it should be, and people are wasting their money and resources actually trying to prepare far too much for it. So there's a bunch of things that have actually changed. The reality for most students is this, that no longer do we have the high competition to get into university that we used to have. Uh, for example, last year, only about 1.5% of students actually missed out on what they wanted. And it's really only high demand courses, for example, like medicine, where we need to break ties between students. In most cases, we simply don't need a statewide ranking. And in fact, this is an Australian peculiarity where most jurisdictions around the world don't have school results then contributing to tertiary entrance. In fact, they're two separate processes. So uh, the Australian Council for Educational Research report last year that the Queensland Government accepted and so forth and made that announcement on August 25th uh, this year, 2015, actually said don't have that simplistic uh, one-figure result at all, whether it's an OP or an, ATAR, an Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank, an ATAR, just simply look at the results and consider if a student wants to do engineering, it's probably quite prudent that they've done some advanced maths and physics to get in to, say, do engineering at university. I think the notion is that don't define yourself by your overall position result that you get, whether it's an OP1 or an OP13 or an OP25, one being the top and 25 being the bottom, because back in 92, most of the students were in that race. Today, they're not. And so you're not comparing like with like. The main reason for the falling away of the number of students there is quite simply that the curriculum offerings to be able to get an overall position are somewhat limited and indeed the results that you get in the subjects, for example, are not readily comparable. There's approximately 57 authority subjects these days that can be used and you can imagine even if you were the single marker in a subject uh, that it would be difficult to maintain consistency. Can you imagine that across 57 areas with different cohorts of students and uh, characteristics? A big change. So I think that one of the things to realise is that people mature intellectually with their cognitions and so forth at about age 23 for females and about age 27 for males. And so a lot of the planning, the thinking and all that sort of stuff that we consider normal when we're in our 30s or whatever we are actually doesn't come in to the fore, if you like. So we're looking at 17-year-olds who are in some cases not achieving necessarily as well as they might do at a later period. And one of the big things about the school curriculum is that you often have to fit into the timetable. You might want to study particular subjects, but because of timetable clashes in what the school sets up, you can't do it. And so a number of students find that they're not necessarily that interested in all five or six authority subjects if they're going down that route for an overall position. And those school results are truly about school results. They're not necessarily a good indicator of how somebody who then goes to a university or another tertiary institution who is desperately interested in being an engineer will likely perform in the future. I think they're one of the key things we know from research evidence these days is that the brain is plastic throughout life. It's not fixed. And so what you might have got for an IQ score at one time might be quite different later on. 
Indeed, we know that the brain doesn't mature for females until about age 23 and 27 for males. And so actually taking, if you like, a look at how someone's achieving at age 17, to me is a little bit almost problematic. We do that for good reason. That's the last year of school in Queensland, year 12 for students. But the reality is that they have significant potential with their plastic brain to change and to achieve much more highly. And often what they are forced to study at school as a result of timetable uh, clashes and things means that they're not necessarily interested in what they've done. And when they come to a tertiary institution such as a university where they are spectacularly interested in being a journalist, an engineer or whatever it is, that is a major, major driver. They're highly motivated and they are keen to perform. And so school results are really about school results and they're not a very good indication at all about future adult potentialities and future, if you like, achievement at, say, university. Indeed, our best indicator for achievements at university is the student's first year university results rather than some stuff they did some time ago under conditions which were totally different. I think there the key thing for students and parents guardians of those students of year 12 that needs to be recognised is that it is absolutely critical to get your foot in the door, preferably the institution, the university, or whatever it is that you care to go to. And then once you're in that place, you can swap between courses and do things. So just because you didn't get into your most preferred course, I'd try and get to the institution I wanted to, to, to go to, but I would absolutely recognise that many of those universities and other institutions actually offer what I want to study. And sometimes I've set my sights uh, because I thought the bright lights of uh, another place such as Brisbane or so on might be attractive. The reality is that often in regional uh, universities such as ours, those very courses they want to study are there. And just very quickly, I hear from local schools here that, for example, in regional Queensland, that a number of students who might perform quite well getting a high OP do go to, for example, Brisbane, to those bright lights, and within six months they are back here in uh, regional Queensland because it wasn't what they expected. Sure, there are some students that continue on, but time and again you hear that the attractiveness of that uh, lost its, uh, if you like, appeal uh, fairly quickly and they're back uh, serving on tables or at a cash register or whatever, doing something until they can kick off the next year. So it's absolutely critical, in my view, for students to get their foot in the door and then gravitate to wherever they want to go. As a quick example, my own son did that. Uh, he got a mid-range overall position. He wanted to do engineering. A number of students got an OP1 in his year. They came and did engineering, for example, with us. And by the end of the first year of engineering, nearly every one of those students, including the OP1 students, were actually consulting him on mathematics. A person who only did maths B at school, didn't do maths C, didn't do physics, but really shone when he said, we engineers, and had the attitude of, I'm going to be successful. And he graduated engineering, first class honours, well done. Well, with the current system, it served us well since it was introduced in 1992. But a number of things have changed, as we've indicated. And in particular, uh, there has been a need to revamp it, to bring it up to, if you like, what's required these days for the sorts of patterns of studies and the sorts of students we have. It's served us well for 20 years. But the reality is the conditions have so changed that it's no longer serving its original purpose. There's been a lot of changes that have been affected in the system on a, an ad hoc basis. And so we find that a number of the blueprint ideas that we had originally, of course, are no longer there. So the new system, I'm looking forward to it. Our current system, if you like, when we look at things, we, we tend to do it retrospectively. We do it at the end of, for example, year 12. Uh, just recently, last week, I was in Brisbane doing comparability meetings where we looked at the standards of achievement across the state of Queensland to see the comparability between the different districts. That's about eight months after some of those assessments were sat by the students, and some of the assessments themselves are not necessarily of the, most, uh, of the highest quality. Some are very sophisticated and some are very ordinary. And so what we're looking to do with the new system is this, reducing the number of assessments, so there'll only be four, three of them will be school-based, 
And another one which is set and marked by the Queensland Curriculum Assessment Authority will indeed contribute about 50% in most of the subject areas. And those school-based ones, we're not going to look, after, look at them months after they've done, but before the year 11 or 12 students sit them to contribute to the new system, which kicks off in 2018, the actual assessments themselves have to be quality assured, and not only the quality of the assessments, that uh, they're easy to read, they're accessible, they're doing what they're meant to do and so on, but the marking scheme with them. And so the assessment of the marking scheme will be checked, but in my view, of equal importance is the marking by the teachers. And so as they kick off their marking to uh, mark the assessments and so on, there again are new quality mechanisms so that we uh, check on the robustness and the quality of that marking for its reliability and its validity. And so instead of looking at things way after the event, we're going to front end it. And I'm really looking forward to that uh, most welcome change from the old to the new.